79% of tech experts are freaking out about our digital future. Terrified yet? Hold on to your smartphones, because plot twist, there might just be a glimmer of hope in this tech dystopia we're building. Well, hello there, you digital doomsday preppers and techno optimists. It's me, Theodore, your friendly neighborhood buzzkill turned beacon of hope, here to take you on a wild ride through the terrifying yet strangely promising landscape of our tech-saturated future. Today's special, a roller coaster of emotions with a side of maybe we're not totally screwed. First up, we're diving into why a whopping 79% of tech experts are losing sleep faster than your phone loses battery. But don't panic just yet. We've got a few reasons why the future might not be all black mirrors and robot overlords. Then, we'll explore the digital paradox of our time. How the same tech that's making us lonelier than ever might also be our ticket to genuine connection. Spoiler alert, it's more complicated than your relationship status. So buckle up, because today we're diving into a future that's overflowing with AI, like mind-blowing tech and a whole bunch of expert opinions. And honestly, these opinions will leave you feeling both super excited and maybe a little bit, well, terrified. Yeah. And the thing is, these aren't just some far off predictions. You know, we're talking about 2035. Which is like tomorrow. Basically, yeah. In the tech world, it practically is. And the experts, they're already kind of wrestling with what all this means, like what it means for all of us. And you've been digging through tons of research, right, to get us ready for this deep dive? I have. Articles, studies. Quotes that would make your head spin. Definitely. But the big question is, will 2035 be like this amazing digital utopia? Or is it going to be more like a dystopian nightmare? It's the million-dollar question. And like always, there are no easy answers. When Pew Research Center asked experts about this, you know what they found. A full 79% wow. admitted they were at least a little concerned about where we're headed, like really concerned. So maybe hold off on buying that flying car just yet. Yeah, just in case. But before we totally freak out, let's start with the good stuff, right? The research points to some seriously exciting potential, especially when it comes to healthcare. We're talking personalized medicine, like tailored to your genes. It's wild. AI diagnostics that could catch diseases way earlier than we can now. And drug discovery. That's getting a massive upgrade. Remember how quickly scientists developed the COVID vaccine? It was like 42 days from a sample of the virus to a vaccine design. Like, that's it. Now imagine that speed becoming the norm for everything. Cancer treatments, the common cold, everything. Okay, now that's a game changer. But it's not just about how fast things move, right? You mentioned AI assistance that could answer any medical question we have, no matter where someone lives or how much money they make. That kind of access, that could totally revolutionize healthcare for everybody. Exactly. It's about making things fair, giving everyone a chance, you know, empowering people, no matter who they are, with knowledge. And this ties into another really interesting possibility, which is how human connection might evolve in this digital world. Okay, I have to admit, the idea that tech is going to make us more connected, it seems a little strange. Isn't that part of the problem already? It really depends on how we use it, right? Think about the metaverse. It's easy to get caught up in all the hype about NFTs and virtual real estate and all that. But what if we use that tech to have really immersive experiences, to connect with the people we love, no matter where they are in the world. Like imagine being able to hug a family member who lives thousands of miles away and it actually feels like they're right there with you. Yeah, that's a powerful image. And it highlights how technology is really just a cool. It's not good or bad on its own, right? It's how we use it. But like we learned from Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. And the experts definitely had some worries about things going sideways. One of the big ones that kept coming up was the idea that AI could like evolve beyond our control, you know, maybe yeah. even becoming a threat to humanity itself. Wait, hold on. Are we talking about some Terminator situation here? Because <laughs> that is terrifying. Not quite robots with laser beams yet. But some really smart people, like leaders in AI development, they're comparing the potential danger to things like pandemics and nuclear war. It's serious stuff, you know, not something we can just ignore. 
That's definitely something to think about. But even if we avoid the whole robot apocalypse thing, there are more immediate concerns, right? Like, what about the impact of all this tech on truth and trust? You're right. That's huge. We're seeing this erosion of truth in the digital age, and it's scary. Misinformation is already everywhere online, and then you add in deep fakes, these AI videos that are basically impossible to tell apart from real life. It's just going to get harder and harder to know what's true. Imagine a world where you can't even trust what you're seeing with your own eyes, let alone what you read online. It's like we're slowly losing touch with reality. Welcome back to The Deep Dive. And speaking of losing touch, the experts were pretty worried about tech's impact on our mental health too, especially when it comes to social isolation and loneliness. And get this, the World Economic Forum, they said that chronic loneliness is as bad for you as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. 15 cigarettes, wow. Yeah. It makes you wonder if some of these platforms are designed to be addictive on purpose, keeping us glued to our screens, even when it makes us feel awful. That's a question a lot of experts are asking. You know, ha have we focused so much on profits and likes and shares that we've forgotten about the human cost? You know, are we putting profits ahead of our own well-being? Okay, so we've covered the good, the bad, and the potentially apocalyptic. So where does that leave us? Are we doomed to become, like slaves to our devices, just endlessly scrolling ourselves into oblivion. Not necessarily. And this is where it gets interesting. The experts were clear about one thing. The future isn't set in stone. It's not decided yet. It's more like, you know, a choose your own adventure. Oh, I like those. Right. We're the ones holding the controllers. So we're not just along for the ride. We get a say in how all this plays out. Exactly. It's not about giving in to some kind of, you know, tech destiny. It's about making choices like right now to shape the future we want. And, you know, one thing I kept seeing in the research was this idea of ethical design. Ethical design Up sounds nice. But what does that even mean? Like, are we talking about tech companies suddenly deciding to be good guys instead of worrying about profits? It's it's more complicated than that. It's about changing how we approach tech instead of just being driven by, can we build this? It's asking, should we build this? And if we do, how can we do it right? Mm. You know, how do we build technology that makes us better, not worse? So it's not just hoping for the best. We actually have to like push for tech that's designed ethically. Yeah. Think of it this way. Every time you use social media, every time you buy a new gadget, you're sending a message. You're telling the companies what you care about, what you'll accept. And those choices, they add up. They have the power to change the future of tech. So what can we do? Like, where do we even start? Start by knowing what's going on. Learn about new technologies, the good and the bad. Pay attention to how things are being used, how they're designed. Don't be afraid to ask the tough questions, you know, like, is this algorithm biased? Is this platform designed to be addictive? Is it really about my well-being or someone else making money? Like we need to be tech detectives or something. Exactly. And if you see something that doesn't seem right, say something. Support groups fighting for better tech. Hold those companies accountable. Remember, things change when people get together and demand better. Look at the movements pushing for data privacy, holding social media companies responsible, you know, demanding better AI. It's gaining ground because people are waking up and speaking out. OK, that's good to hear. But even if we manage to push tech in a more human direction, it's still changing so fast. How do we keep up? How do we make sure we and our kids can actually handle this digital world as it keeps changing? You just hit on something super important. Yeah. Digital literacy. <laughs> you don't just mean like knowing how to use the newest phone. right? No, it's much bigger than that. It's not enough to just know how to use the tech. We need to understand it, how it works, how it affects us, how to decide what information is actually true. We need some kind of digital immune system, right? Yeah. To block out all the noise, the lies, those sneaky algorithms. Exactly. We need the knowledge and skills to protect ourselves, right? But it's also about being able to actually do stuff in the digital world, using its power for good, to create a future where technology helps us be more human, not less. This all makes sense, but I'm curious about the practical stuff. What does digital literacy actually look like in real life? Well, for one, it starts with education, right? 
We need to teach kids how to think critically about what they see online, to get the ethics of technology, how to be good digital citizens. So this is a big change, not just a quick fix. Absolutely. It takes parents having these conversations at home, communities creating programs, workplaces offering training. It's everyone working together, talking to each other, and being willing to change as tech changes. Sounds like a tall order. But so important, this isn't just about coding or using apps, it's about shaping the future of tech itself. There's no app for that, is there? Not yet, at least. But hey, we're all in this together, and the mm -hmm. decisions we make today as individuals and as a society, those decisions will determine what the digital world looks like in 2035 and beyond. So we're kind of building the plane as we're flying it on, no pressure or anything. But seriously, with all these potential problems in this digital future, was there anything hopeful in the research? like? What about the experts who are optimistic? What do they see happening? You know, even with all the warnings and what ifs, one thing really stuck with me, human connection. Like even with all the worries about tech pushing us apart, a lot of experts think it can actually make our relationships stronger, build better communities, even help us understand each other better. So it's not tech itself that's the problem, it's how we use it, right? Like a hammer can build a house or it can break stuff. Totally, we're all kind of like architects in this digital world, shaping it with every click, every decision. It comes down to what we're trying to do. Are we connecting in a real way, using tech to learn and grow, make things better? Or are we letting it use us? That's a really good way to think about it. So where do we go from here? Experts laid out some pretty scary possibilities, but there's hope too. What's the takeaway for everyone listening? What can we do, like each of us, to make sure tech helps humanity, not the other way around? It starts with knowing what's up. Learn about the good and the bad of these new technologies. Yeah. You know, pay attention to how they're being used, how they're made, and don't be afraid to ask questions. If something feels off, dig deeper do some research and say something. You're like a digital detective, right? I like it. What else can we do? Be smart about how you use tech yourself. Ask, is this app, this platform, is it actually making my life better or just sucking up my time? It's about balance. Set some limits. Make time for real life stuff. Remember that tech should add to your life, not be your whole life. Be in control, right? Make choices about how tech fits into our lives, not let it control us. Exactly. And this isn't just about us, it's the example we set for kids, for the future. We've got to teach them to think for themselves online, to use tech ethically, be informed. We can't just give them a phone and hope for the best. We have to give them the tools to handle all this responsibly. Right, and you know what? Maybe if we're all more aware, more thoughtful, more active in shaping this digital future, 2035 won't be so bad. It might even be amazing. A future with unbelievable advancements, deeper connections, tech that helps us make a better world. That's a future worth working towards. I couldn't agree more. Well, on that note, we'll leave you with this. If, if the experts are already debating if AI could be a threat to humanity, shouldn't we all be part of that conversation? What can you do starting today to make sure tech is a force for good? Something that lifts us up, not something that holds us back. Think about it. And until next time, keep diving deep. Well, 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 my digitally diminished comrades and virtual reality refugees, we've somehow stumbled to the end of this terrifying trek through tomorrow's techno hellscape. Feel like your brain just got cross-pollinated with a smartphone? Yeah, welcome to the club. We meet every Tuesday in the metaverse. It's BYOA, bring your own avatar. So what's the verdict? Ready to trade your smartphone for a carrier pigeon? Maybe you're eyeing that old Nokia brick phone, wondering if it's time to make a grand return to T9 texting. Or perhaps you're considering a career pivot to become a professional digital detoxer. Because apparently, that's a thing now. If this episode planted some existential seeds in the barren wasteland of your screen-fried mind, don't hoard that cognitive compost. Share it with your techno-optimist cousin who thinks AI is going to solve world hunger, or that one friend who's still trying to become TikTok famous. Spoiler, it's not going to happen, Karen. Remember, every digital revolution started with someone asking, wait, should we really do this? So keep questioning, keep exploring, and maybe you'll stumble upon the next big thing in tech ethics. 
Just don't name it after me. I've got enough identity issues without an AI ethics framework bearing my name. Yeah.